Good evening and welcome to episode 271 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Dongwa Kumalo. It's a Tuesday edition of the Private Property Podcast. If you're joining us for the first time, well, you've missed out on quite a number of great episodes that we've already brought to your screen. So do make sure that you go to our Facebook or our YouTube page and catch up on some of that great content. And all our regular viewers, welcome to it. You know how we do every single weekday at 7 p.m. You and I have an appointment where I'm always in conversation with a property expert who helps us on our property journey. And not only do you get a snapshot of help with your property journey by watching the show every weekday at 7 p.m., but there's also a whole host of other shows that you can tune into right here on Private Property. I am talking about the Farming Podcast that's brought to your screens by award-winning farmer Umbalino but that comes to your screens every single Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you can look forward to it later on this evening at 8 p.m. And Umbali will be speaking to uh, the guy behind the Cooler app. Uh, so if you want to get a sense of what that is all about, the work that they're doing, then do make sure that you tune in on the show. And every Mondays and Friday, Chad brings you the Home Shoppers Show where he takes us through some exclusive properties Properties, not just in Gauteng, but all over the country. So if you want to get a snapshot of some of those gorgeous properties that you can also, of course, see on www.privateproperty.co.za, then do make sure that you tune in to the farming, to the home shopper show, rather, every Monday and Friday. And on Wednesdays, we do not leave you alone. Esther Clarkson brings you First time home buyer show. She's always in conversation with the first time home buyer who not only went from buying that first property, but they've gone to grow their property portfolio from strength to strength. So if you want to get a sense of how you can also do so, then that is a show that you want to make sure you are tuned into. Of course, you follow us on our social media platforms. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, uh, we're on LinkedIn. We're also on TikTok, so do make sure that you follow us there. You'll catch great videos that Chad and Esty do on TikTok. You can follow myself at Zamantumwa underscore K on face on Instagram as well as on Twitter. Well, it is the first of June. We're kickstarting Youth Month, and we thought, you know what, we need to bring young people to be able to profile young people in property, but also look at the you know great properties, I mean, certainly the great businesses that young people in the property space are in. Uh, later on, you know, during this month of Youth Month, we'll also be exploring what other opportunities are there for young people who are in the property space. So if you're a young person aspiring to get into property or you know other young people who want to get into property, this is the podcast that you certainly do not want to miss out on. This evening, uh, as we kickstart the youth month, we're going to be speaking to Lisa Winston as well as Carl McKay, who are from um, from Libertalia Group. Lisa Winston Gunene um, and Carl McKay, they're from Libertalia Group, and they're going to be in conversation with us as we explore what it takes to make it into the real estate industry in 2021, especially as a young person. Gentlemen, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, uh, Kyle and Timbisa. I think one of the one the, the big starting point, uh, and in this case, it's a small starting point. We're joking about it off air. I was saying to both of you that the elephant in the room, uh, or in the our context, probably the the, the 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 you know the mouse in the room, <laughs> is that both of you are quite young. Uh, I mean, when we even looked at the poster for this episode, I was saying that you both even look 16 i know that you're not you're in your <laughs> and i think that's probably a great starting point right because one of the things about being a young person in in industries that are sometimes considered very grown up or doing what is considered to be you know very grown up is that people look at you and think ah Nanilo, i can't take you seriously you're far too young uh, and when you look at property as an asset class it's this big thing right we're not talking yeah. 10 rands 20 rands it's hundreds of thousands of rands sometimes millions of, uh, of friends. So, Tim, so yeah. I'll start with you. I mean, when we look at young people in property, and certainly for both of you being young in property, how have you found navigating the property space? I know you haven't been in it for too long, uh, but I know you've probably already gotten your fair share of you're so young. What do you know about you know property? What do you know about this asset class and working with this asset class? 
Okay, so um, actually, I I started real estate about five years ago with Pam Golding. Um, you know, they still consider the best residential and mm-hmm. commercial real estate agency in the country. So I was privileged enough to get training from them, um, starting off as an intern at such a very young age, straight after school, um, I joined them. And I learned quite a lot about real estate um, from owning properties um, to selling properties to letting properties. Um, and yeah, what I, what I can tell you is, is when it comes to people's assets, it's not a joke. You know, it's not easy, especially as a young person, um, you know, reaching out to a seller, for example, and just <clears throat> giving them the idea that you've got, you know, the ability, you have the abilities to sell their property. It's very, it usually is a difficult thing because they look at your age and until they start conversing with you only to find out that actually this guy is, is quite, he's quite knowledgeable in the industry. He knows what he's talking about, you know, and that's how we're able to gain trust is, is the knowledge is the branding. Um, we're able to show our portfolios. We're able to show our previous successes. And, and that's what, that's what brings in the business. Um, it's very possible. Nothing is impossible in this industry. Mm, and, and I think, you know, a lot of guests that we've had on the show before share that sentiment around it, it is a tough industry to crack it in, especially when you don't have the network or, you know, you're still starting off essentially from scratch. But it is one of those industries where uh, you're able to, at the very most, if you put your best foot forward and work with what we have, I think for you, one of the great things, you know, highlighting that you're able to start with a really great uh, agency and, and, of course, having them as sort of the anchor certainly did play a huge role in where you are now now in your career but Kyle I want to ask you the same thing I mean I was teasing you off air uh, you know saying you, you looked you looked 16 and you're saying that no somebody said you you know you look 28 I was like never yeah, that eh? uh, uh, there's no way you look 28 <laughs> I think at no, most eh? maybe maybe like 26 at most but certainly not 28 I mean I'll how do you it. go I'll about are you going to take 26? I'll take <laughs> I think, you know, how do you, how do you navigate being taken seriously, firstly, in, in an industry as serious as, as real estate, especially given the, the nature of the work that both of you do, um, and being as young as you are? Because sometimes people are like, you just don't have the experience. I want to work yeah. with somebody who's got experience. I want to work with a, a property group or a property company or an agency list with somebody who's who've been in the industry for at least 10 years. Um, so how do you go about, you know, navigating that uh, so that you're still able to get business? Because I think that's a big thing, right? You want to get the sales yeah. uh, in order for both of you to get the experience and to continue growing the business. Yeah, it's definitely something down the line. And Winston put it amazingly in the sense of, you know, it is someone's asset. It is a mass amount of money. Even when investors come to us saying that, you know, they have, hundreds of millions in portfolios that they want us to deal with. But I think, you know, what and our main foundation, what's let us go on is we want to prove ourselves. You know, we would rather show our actions and show well we can be trusted. We do have the knowledge with it. And I think with our partnerships, we've actually been able to accomplish that. You know, being partnered with Uber, being partnered with KW, it's, you know, they, they believe us. They believe in us. Um, especially in it is a big hurdle especially if we look at some of our teammates where you know they are young guys and how do we actually provide them with the confidence and tell them listen you the best way to move forward is educate yourself use the the resources that are around you and and rather let your actions show uh because that's that's the best thing especially when dealing with someone's assets and also educating yourself because if you aren't going to educate yourself in it you don't know where the right direction is. Even when it comes to consultations with investments, how do you even point your investor, your client into the best direction? Um, but so from the way I kind of go by and the way we go by when it comes to uh, uh, being taken seriously, we just want our actions to, to prove for themselves uh, with successful listings, with a great track, track record, with um, partnerships that are with uh, accountable institutions that actually trust us. So I think that all adds into the fact that people do trust us, people do see our actions and actually move forward with it. 
Mm. And, you know, Tembisa, I actually want to explore why property. You, you were mentioning how when you started off, you started fresh from school, joined Pam Golding Estate, so you didn't go the conventional route of finishing with trade and, you know, looking at maybe varsity and then a corporate career, but really chose a very different way of, um, I'll say, a different kind of career because most people don't typically, for example, choose to be estate agents uh, from the bat. That's one of those careers that we sometimes find people choosing later on in life as opposed to when they're still uh, relatively young. So how do you land on property and going the property route? Okay, so um, so fortunately enough, I was already in entrepreneurship, uh, in the entrepreneurial space uh, during high school. Um, and I happened to meet a lady at the right place at the right time who was an estate agent at that time, um, who probably still is. Um, and she, she, you know, she, she, all she was looking for was young entrepreneurs who are coming up um, and who are going to sort of get into the industry. And I had no clue whatsoever. I was actually never even intending on joining real estate. I was just privileged enough to get the offer from the lady. Um, hence, she knew me from, from, you know, from back in high school, what I was uh, usually getting myself up to. And, you know, so... I think what changed for me was when I, I joined the industry and I started learning about wealth investments and how people make money through property, how wealth is created, um, what are the benefits of owning real estate, um, how you can easily retire so early with owning real estate. So when all those things came into, you know, when I was a, kind of aware of all of that, that's when I, I took the, the step forward and I, I started investing my passion into it. I invested my time and effort and, and I saw myself um, doing very well in the industry based on the entrepreneurial skill that I already had gained from high school, um, you know, and to get mixing it together with the knowledge that I acquired from training. So um, I think it was, it was God's grace to, to find myself in this industry and knowing very well what, what the benefits are and knowing how to utilize them in the next 20 to 50 years. Mm. And Kyle, I mean, you're the you're the younger one in the duo. Why property? How did you land up with also choosing the property route for yourself? I, I think you know, I Winston and I were in in business together for quite a while, and I always knew he was in real estate even before I had started real estate. And you know, working alongside him, you know, we we had different passions, but they always aligned. Um, so when it came to it, you know, we, we decided, okay, well, why, why not I just say, why don't I just start real estate? You know, I, I'm already doing uh, some work for, for social media management. I'm already ready, doing the research when it comes to managing the page and getting this done. So why not? We, I know where our visions are. So why not just join the industry, get actual hands-on experience, get actual uh field experience so i know how to actually direct that i know the actual ins and outs and what it might actually take because yeah it's something that just fell in my lap and you know i I looked at it and thought you know what this this is actually perfect it gives me the independence that i need it gives me the learning that i need it's such a deep and such a beautiful topic that it's it's layer and layer and layer so i think moment I, i i peeled back that first layer and saw the investments and how to actually make money and all the finance behind it. I was like, wow. And I peeled back another layer and it just, it became each time I peeled back a layer, it was so refreshing. Uh, and yeah, it was also a nice challenge being a young person in the industry. So it was kind of a, uh, I was attracted to that challenge. Mm-mm. I'm this evening in conversation with Tim Bisa, Winston Gunen, as well as Carl McKay, who are the duo behind Libertaria Group. As we're exploring what it takes to make it in the real estate in 2021, we're kickstarting Youth Month with both these gentlemen. I see that my camera is actually doing a uh, very crazy thing. So I know at home you're still able to hear me. So we're having minor technical issues. And I'm going to take it to you, Tim Bisa, you know, so people who are alone 
looking at uh, perhaps looking at getting the services of uh, Libertaria Group, what are they going to be getting? Should they be wanting to work with you, whether it is listing that property uh, for you to sell the property for them or walking, of course, that home ownership journey with you? What does Libertaria or how is Libertaria Group different from what they would get from another agency that's also, uh, you know, starting off or has recently started? Um, thank you for asking that. So Libertalia's vision is to be the leading real estate and finance, finance organization um, to enrich every mind in the African continent. Um, so Libertalia is sort of a one-stop shop for every real estate-related stakeholders, um, from consumers to partnerships um, to any other related stakeholders at hand. So what we offer, which is quite unique, um, as mentioned, as a one-stop shop, we've got a variety of, of services where we've, we, we get sellers to, to list their properties on our website. We've got a huge traffic of people coming into our website um, to utilize many different services in the property sector. So um, we're sort of running a, a, a um, yeah, we're selling properties, listings. Uh, we've got uh, services for, for buyers to inquire as well if they're looking for properties in, in a, with whichever area that they're situated in. So we're able to source relationships with other estate agents to get them uh, a five-star service in terms of finding a property that they're looking for. Um, and then we've got a partnership as well with um, Uber Home Loads. So for any, any buyer, first-time buyer, experienced buyer, any buyer at hand, we're able to assist them with bond origination where they would obviously submit um, quite a, a number of documents required by the banks and we'll go use our partnership with our relationship with the banks to get them the best interest rates at hand. Um, we've got that services that's coming up on the website as well. We have um, conveyancing, we facilitate a conveyancing process. Uh, as you know, to transfer a property from one name to another, you only conveyances can do that. So we've partnered up with quite a few conveyances just to quicken the process as well to, you know, with the repeatable source um we're able to to quicken those processes as well and many other interesting things especially for since this topic today is about joining the real estate industry um we have a special course um that's going to be up on on, on the prop on the website as well where whoever is interested in joining uh, real estate will go through an induction course and they'll just get to know the basis of it and um and Carl, Carl is actually leading that, that uh, specific course there. So, yeah, we've got that coming up so that it also gives opportunities to young, the younger generation as well. Um, for people who there are so many people I've interacted with um, that are young and have no idea how the real estate industry works. Some people don't know much about property. And if you look at the majority of the estate agents, I think we have about over 50,000 registered estate agents in the country. Most of them are pretty old. Um, so I think it's, it's quite nice that now we, were fo we found ourselves in, in, you know, we found ourselves in an area where we allow such opportunities for younger people to join the industry um, just to have that switch in, in, you know, in place. But yeah, so that's, that's, that's basically what we do. We do do uh, additional services which are not necessarily related to real estate. So doing branding for other companies, um, um, we do branding, digital branding, digital marketing for them because uh, it's done a lot for us. So we sort of share that success and uh, we, we sell it as well. And most importantly, not to name a few, we, we've got our consultation services as well. If you don't want to buy a property or you, you, you're a first time buyer and you have no idea how to go about purchasing a property, we've got a consultation service where we, we'll take you through the whole step uh, with you finding a property, the right property, uh, doing your calculations um, correctly, making sure that we get our partnership as well, Uber, who give you financial services, um, advice on financial services in terms of your credit scores and your, your, you know, your credibility for the banks to approve you for your home loans. So we've got a lot of those services in place. So it's almost like a one-stop shop in the property sector. And we haven't really seen any company that's done that yet um or before so that's that's what makes us different 
Mm. I'm this evening speaking to Timbi Sagunen as well as Carl McKay, who are from Libertaria Group, as we profile young people in a real estate uh, for this June, uh, for this youth month. Look at me saying for this June month, uh, as we're kickstarting, of course, uh, the first of June and the first episode that we're having for the theme of youth in property. And and I think, you know, earlier on, I, I had a minor technical glitch. A part of me was you know almost laughing about how yesterday we had this amazing episode and cameras where you know somebody else was handling the cameras i was even saying to the gents earlier that i now have to find where my camera is where my light is uh so only getting used to not having to do that aspect so we'll definitely be exploring more and more of those kinds of episodes so that i don't have to do this part this way at home i want to hear from you at home i mean we're speaking to young people who were able to get a sense of what they want to do fairly early in their career. I want to hear from you at home. What was the first career that you had? Uh, And if you've changed, what have you now changed to? I know that many of you, of course, who watch the show are either prospective first-time home buyers, have already bought that first property, you're looking at growing your portfolio as much as possible. And so in many ways, you're running your your property business as you're growing your property portfolio, even if, for example, you're employed full-time in another job altogether. But what was that first career that you started off with in the beginning and what have you now sort of transitioned to slowly i know some of other viewers at home want to transition full-time to property and are exploring the different ways uh, for them to be able to do so now I, I want to bring this one i'm going to ask this to both of you and i'll start with you carl and one of the things that we saw is of course the pandemic has had a devastating effect on people's you know finances we saw the the fundamental impact that it had across industries especially the real estate industry when you look at how business was last year versus this year what have been some of the trends that you've picked up certainly for yourselves as a business um you know how is business doing now relative to uh, let's say this time last year i mean this time last year we were uh, still i think we probably would have been in level four level three yeah we're, we're still, still, still there. on hyper vigilance yeah we're still yeah. very like hyper vigilant um and hadn't started you know being relaxed about how we're doing things and the economy hadn't sort of fully opened up mm. wow yeah i i you know i it's such an in-depth topic i think at this point because when it started off a lot of people weren't ready and i think that was that showed because even when it came to some of the deals that we were in the midst of, of you know, we've signed the offers, we, now we just need to get the transfer costs and everything sorted. And the moment lockdown happened, there was this big financial crisis where people actually weren't able to afford that. And a few of our OTPs had to fall through due to that. Um, and that went on, if, if we look back for, for a couple of months, where people were just crazy and there were rumors that uh, agents were going to drop out and that property value was going down, but property value was going up and this constant shift, but there was just panic all over the market. That was during lockdown. Um, mm. But the moment you sit and you actually look at the market, you know, it, people either have to downscale or they have to upscale or they have to constantly shift properties. And we saw at least with the, for a short period of time, remember the banks were, were being very strict with the, the bonds that they were giving out. So for, I think a month, to three months it was very difficult for people to purchase a home um but the moment those clouds faded away we actually found that you know this is it is an opportunity here there are commercial buildings and we we've all seen it you go to a mall and now a vacant place is open well that that's an opportunity for that place to be sold or um, industrial zones, people have to downscale either because you know the the company's falling through. So there's, it seems that there's an opportunity for agents everywhere, uh, even if it's helping someone downscale. And at least the banks have been a little bit nicer now when it comes to lowering the repo rate, and it's made a lot of buying a lot more cheaper than actually renting, which has I think helped a lot of people. But what we have learned from it is there's there's always going to be opportunity especially from our perspective, uh, we just got to position ourselves where one, we can help people either find what they're looking for, or if they need financial help, then we can also assist them with that. It's, I think, you know, it was a very, for those first few months, it was very shocking because a lot of us actually couldn't even go out to 
to viewings because that was the restriction. We we couldn't get the letters to go out to viewings. We couldn't, and some of us were were off the record. We were going to viewings just to they were down the road. We we're getting them sorted. We were just helping helping our 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 clients move out. And but we we learned through all that trouble that you know now we just need to position ourselves properly. We need to look at the market. We need to actually see, okay, well, okay, well, that's why these questions of are you downscaling? Um, what is the reason for selling? What is the reason for buying? These questions become so crucial now because now we know actually how to help our client to the the fullest. How do they need us? Uh, do we need to actually reach out to different bond originators mm-hmm. that can help them mm-hmm. financially? Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it's definitely, I think those those three to five months during those lockdown was such an interesting period because we were attending talks where, um, you know, there were 5,000 agents that were dropping out. They don't want to be agents anymore because they need that fixed income. We can't even go out to the agents anymore. So how do we, how do we sell a property? How do we even sell a property when the seller is too scared to sell? Um, but looking at the market right now and looking at our team, everyone is having buyers. There's so many buyers everywhere, which makes sense. We're in a buyer's market. You know, the, everyone wants to buy a house. Everyone wants to move forward. And that's, it, it, it's amazing to see, but obviously it needs to be balanced. We need buyers and sellers. So now it's just a matter of fact of going to actually go find the sellers versus, you know, we, every day we get like three buyers. We need to go help and we need to find properties for, um, but that's what we predicted. We predicted a buyer's market moment the, right out the, right out the gate of COVID. Which makes sense financially. It makes sense, um, you know. It, it, there's a the bit of debate when the sellers market might come through, but you know, right now, it's it, the amount of buyers that are resurging is is really amazing. Mm. You know, Timmy, sir, when we explore our conversation this evening, I'm, I'm really keen to find out from you for young people who are looking at property as a potential career stream, whether they want to, for example, join an agency uh, or maybe maybe even go at it themselves, what insight would you be able to give them to help them make that decision? Because I've seen a number of people saying, look, perhaps there are ways that I can explore doing property. Some of them saying, maybe I'll do it part-time while I'm still you know, doing my normal day job. So I'll be an estate agent on the side. And I've certainly seen a number of people you know, being estate agents on the side, especially younger people who want to just first test the waters a little bit and get a sense of how the, the space is like and also build up their network, build up their right, uh, certainly build up their book before they go at it full-time. What, what kind of insight would you, you know, give to somebody who's looking at venturing into property full-time? So um, I would, okay, so firstly, um, when it comes to real estate sales, to, when you sell your first property, it takes about three months for a property to register. So the first advice I would give is before you consider joining the industry, make sure you have a budget of at least um, six months that will cover your expenses while you join that industry, you know, needing to learn how to, how to sell within the, the, that period. I mean, when I started, my first sale will, took me three months to sell my first property. So it, essentially it registered on the sixth month. So, I mean, there's, there's agents that joined us recently. One of the agents made a sale in the first two weeks. You never know when you're about to sell or when you're going to sell, but it's so crucial for you to be on a specific budget that will protect you for the next few months while you're trying to sell. And then, um, yeah, secondly, I would, I would say that you'd, you'd have to sharpen your communication skills, sharpen your, your knowledge, um, read as many real estate-related books as much as possible. I think the things that I have, Carl and I have been able to do um, in our company is based on, the, based on the articles and the books that we read. Um, you know, information is free now. You can simply go on Google and Google as much information as possible. Educate yourself about the industry and give yourself about a month or two. And then when you go into that interview, whether you want to join a Pam Golding or a Libertalia or any other company, um, any other real estate company, they will be able to see that this person has adequate knowledge on the industry. And so we will give them a chance. So that would be my Mm -hmm. second advice on, on people wanting to join. And um, yeah, I think everything else falls into place. You, you don't need a massive degree. 
PhD to sell property. It's um, it's it's all it's all it's a facilitation process. It's building a relationship with that with the seller, building a relationship with the buyer, and you introduce the buyer to the seller, and you've got a relationship with the attorney and the bond originator and, and so forth. So all of that is just a process that anyone can really um you know ach- achieve it's just a facilitation process so so i don't people shouldn't fear the idea of yes i'm selling people's massive assets um it's expensive the industry is difficult it is difficult if you think so but if you change your mindset which is my third advice um make sure that you enhance your mindset make sure that you've got you get into the property industry with the right mindset knowing that you can do it knowing that it's possible um, like it has been for for Carl and I, it has been for any other young real estate agents out there. Um, um, so yeah, that's 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 what I would suggest as a as advice. We've got a question coming here on YouTube from Daniela Diaz asking, "What was the biggest problem you guys faced when starting up Libertalia?" Uh, Carl, I'll give that one to you. Uh, the biggest problem you faced. The biggest challenge that you have faced. <laughs> wow, I think you know. Briefly touching on this earlier was, you know, the the age. You know, we. we how do we make a difference at our age? Number one, how do we prove to people that uh, you should trust our portfolios? You should trust us. We can assist you. We're not going to lead you down. Our valuations aren't up market. They aren't. They actually the, the most detailed price that we can go. How can? And these are the things that we need to actually look at. We can't ig- ignore them and say, "Well, you know, we are just the best." Full stop. Well, that's not the case. We need to go into detail. How can we actually change it? I think we entered the market at a fantastic time where our our emphasis was on social media marketing. Our emphasis was how can we actually get clients through social media platforms how can we get clients and build our platform and show them all you know what this is the case and this becomes a service that we offer Uh, we have a database now of all our social media clients which is quite extensive that we made ourselves and we can actually introduce our properties our buyers sorry to our portfolios Um, so the most difficult thing was okay stop let's see how can we actually be different how can we get people to trust us and how can we actually move forward um, and, and establish the right partnership, establish the right connection without seem, seeming arrogant or without maybe seeming cocky. Uh, so these were those, I think, for, for me was the, the, the hardest thing because we, we definitely want to ground ourselves. We want to make ourselves different. We want to make ourselves different yet effective um, in, in that property market. And that's something that, Winston and I uh, sat for for months and months and months trying to to polish, and I think w- we got that foundation down where we actually started building our portfolios. We started letting the work speak for itself. We started mm-hmm. um, when it comes to investment properties. Now you know we have developers come through to us and talk to us about it, and there's no there's never been a discussion about age, which is funny enough with developers. There's never been a discussion about age. It's purely just and, a and, and you tend to find it's because so many of them uh, started off young, uh, yeah, so exactly. so they know yeah. that that pressure point all too well. We're gonna I'm gonna end off with this last question. And I'll give it to you, Timbi. So this question is coming from YouTube from Usanke Lobambisa who asks, what has been your proudest moments or what have been some of your proudest moments since starting Libertalia? Wow. Um, <laughs> sure that's that's a very interesting <laughs> question. Um, there's there's so many of them. Um, I think it's just to to, so to summarize it, it's seeing a vision come into reality. Um, yeah, slowly but surely. Every, every win that comes in, we, we, we take it in, we process it, we celebrate it, and we just move to the next win. So um, my proudest moments are the, um, the things that we wished for, um, there's the fact that we actually went for them and we got them and, and we're still continuing. It's, it's not the end of the road. Um, I'm proud of, I'm proud of my partnership with Carl. It's, it's been an amazing journey with him. I'm proud of, um, 
seeing the company become because because when yes when I started the company initially it was about me but all of that faded away um, and it's I'm just proud to see the the company growing and benefiting others benefiting a whole lot of others um, we're seeing great feedback from our agents from our partners it's it's creating opportunities it's it's actually contributing towards the economy uh, we we mm-hmm. aim to we aim to you know, to go as far as, as we can. So, yeah, thank you for that question. <laughs> and that's a great place to leave it at. Kyle Timbisa, thank you so much for joining us and for our viewers at home, of course, if you want to get in touch with them, we have shared their content details down here below. We're definitely going to be watching out for the many strides I know both of you are going to make in the business. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> And that is Kyle McKay, as well as Utimbisa Winston Gunene, who are behind the Viteria Group. And it has been a great episode, a great way to kickstart June's the Youth Month. I keep missing it. I think I'm getting too old. I mean, this was one of those things that <laughs> I always used to look forward to. Perhaps it's, it, I'm giving away my age, even though I still fall within the youth category. Uh, the fact that Youth Month still keeps slipping my, my, my lips is certainly testimony that maybe I've, I'm now a bit too old. Uh, and maybe shouldn't refer to myself as a youth. And that's also my cue to certainly love you and leave you this evening as we get ready, of course, for the farming podcast with award-winning farmer Umbali Nwago, who'll be in conversation with the with the guy behind the cooler app. You can look forward through um, you can look forward to that episode later on this evening at 8 p.m. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Until then, hoping you're staying home, staying safe, and keeping warm.